Hello, and welcome to section 2.3. Um, we're talking more about classification, and you might be wondering, why do we talk about classification so much? Um, why is it important? Um, it's really important for understanding life and the unity of life, the differences of, between different forms of life. Um, it helps us to understand even our ecosystem and the changes that occur there as we say, see changes in life and in different forms of life. Um, it can provide valuable insight when we discover new species, um, new strains of uh, weeds or things that might affect any number of things, our crops or um, other life on earth. So classification is a really useful way of understanding our environment and the organisms around us. Um, what characteristics, here I have at the very top, are most helpful in classifying organisms? That is a really good question because we've seen that, that there are some different ways of classifying. Um, and what ways are the most helpful? What characteristics are most helpful? Here uh, I just wrote color and size vary a lot within a species. If you look at all these different pictures that I have right here, they're all red. Why not call all of them a species? I think you probably know it. That probably wouldn't be a very good idea. But um, structure varies less within a species. So we often look at structure um, more with more weight than we do the color and the size because they vary so much within a species. Classification focuses a lot on homologies. So homologies are uh, structures that indicate a related evolutionary ancestry, not just similarity. So it, it's uh, kind of a, has more depth than simply they look alike. So here we have six different vertebrates. There's uh, right here we have a turtle a dolphin, a human, a horse, a bat, and a bird. And we have the four limb of each of those. And as you can see on the chart, uh, different parts of that four limb are uh, colored in different colors. We have the phalanges as yellow. So on each one of those, the very uh, tip of those, the phalanges, are colored in yellow. The metacarpals are um, just below the phalanges, we have carpals. The ulna and the radius are colored in each of the, these organisms and the humerus. And you can see the amazing similarity between each of these vertebrates. So while homologous structures are those that are similar and also show a shared ancestry, we have a different term to refer to structures that do not show um, similar ancestries, and that would be analogous structures. So we call them analogies or analogous structures. They are similar in appearance and function, but they are not the result of shared ancestry. And here we have an example. We have an insect wing, um, and insects fly. They have a wing, as do bats and birds. But um, birds and bats have a common ancestor, whereas the insect does not share a common ancestor with them. Um, its ancestor was an arthropod, and so we would call the insect wings, um, as opposed to the bat or bird wings, analogous structures. So why are structural characteristics important in classification? And when we say structural, we mean anatomical. So a, a structure, a, a physical structure on the, uh, within that organism. So why are they important when we classify? Well, there are a couple of reasons. One, they are really easy to observe, both now in current organisms that are living, as well as in fossils. And that's really important because fossils are the only evidence that we may have of extinct species and extinct organisms can help determine relationships of living ones. And so the fact that we can see some of the structural characteristics in fossils is really important. 
Are we limited to structural homologies for classification? Absolutely not. Um, there are chemical homologies. That would be similarities at the chemical level. And when we talk about that, we're usually talking about comparing cell cellular polymers, really large, large molecules, molecules within the cell. For example, amino acid sequences in, within proteins or nucleotide sequences in the DNA. Um, chemical homologies do have limited variation because they are very difficult to distinguish between um, whether they're a homology or just merely similar. And that is because, for example, within this DNA strand here, we only have four different nucleotide bases. That is not very many at all, only four. So are we looking at an actual homology when we look at a sequence, or are we just finding some similarities since there are only four to sequence? So um, it can get a little bit difficult for that reason. So because of that, we do not use chemical homologies alone. We use them in conjunction with structural homologies, and together uh, we can use those to classify organisms. So here are a few ideas for four. Um, please feel free to ask your own questions and come up with your own research and your own ideas on things you would like to explore. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in class and seeing what you know.